Now this is an article published by Vanity Fair. And uh, it's about black men and how horrible we are. So we want to address that because what good would we be if we didn't address such such uh, such slanderous uh, uh, talkings? Over here. Here it is. Here's the title of the article. It is Dave Chappelle and the Black Ass Lie That Keeps Us Down. So Jamila Lemieux is a writer and coach's critic. Bylines is the Vanity Fair, the LA Times, the Cut, Playboy, the Nation, Essence, Slate. Okay? And uh, writer, speaker, fixer. She, she's no lightweight. She's known in her space. You know, she's written for a number of publications that are noteworthy. So, uh, been around, around about town, knows people, has leverage, has credibility in the space, not a newbie. Okay, so these things are important to know. Okay, now let's go back to the title because, um, you know, I, I think the title itself deserves further scrutiny. Dave Chappelle in the Black Ass Lie. Okay, that keeps us down. Uh, let's just start there with our criticism. Yeah. Damn, man. Enough. I don't need the applause every time, Tim. Okay. Why are we still talking about Dave Chappelle? Yeah, why are we still talking about Dave Chappelle as the closer? That's been about, I don't know, how many months ago? We're still feeding off of this? This is still giving us agency to talk about to bash black men still? Nothing news happened since then. We are still on Dave Chappelle. On this topic? Is that a little stale? The milk hasn't turned? We're still talking about Dave Chappelle. When did the closer come out, Johnson's? Right? It's been, a, it's been a beat, a couple beats, right? It was a comedy special. It was not a book. It was not a theatrical release. Uh, uh, a play. It was not a play. It was not Shakespeare, Macbeth. It was a comedian's routine on a Netflix special. Just seems a little, a little odd that this is still the topic of an article. And we are talking about it's, you know, it's special, right? You are talking about Deja Pen Okay, so, okay, so let's move on. Let's go uh, further. Also, also, guys, just, uh, the comedian perpetuates the idea that straight black men have it worse than any other group of black people. I don't know if straight black men have it worse. Who, who says this? Who, who says that black men, straight black men, have it worse than any other group of black people? I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying I never really thought about it that way. I just pretty much, so as a black person, because I'm going to look and see if you provide data they prove that that's what people think, because I don't know if that's what people think. Who are these people that you talk to that told you black men have it harder than other black people? Black men are black people, right? We're not like an other. See, right off the top, Jamila Lemieux is othering black men. Isn't she? Why are you isolating black men from black people? Are we not people as well? White people, do you have this problem where white women, white, she's a feminist, that white feminists, other than you, that you are not white men, they're not white anymore, you're just, you're just men. It's like she's grouping black men into this other species that's not, that's not black anymore. We're a different type of black and that we are, and now we think that we're more victims of something as opposed to other groups. So anyway, I just find it, I think it's important not to just accept someone's, someone's narrative, because at the beginning she's, she's creating a narrative. This is all her opinion. I disagree. I disagree that first of all, that black men are separate from black women or separate from black people, regardless of what group she's about to put us in, because that's the whole purpose, I think. Um, and and that we believe something without talking to us. 
Share talk to me. I didn't get my I didn't get my survey to decide to offer my input. Do I think that black men are more subjected to whatever? So anyway, let's keep going because at this rate we'll never get through the article. But I think it's very fitting for us to challenge the mere conversation. Like never just give in to the conversation. Always ask why we have this conversation. What's the material? What's the benefit of this conversation? And why are you framing it this way? The, the, the person framing the narrative has a reason, for the, there's a reason for them framing it that way. I don't think that reason is to benefit us. Who is it to benefit? Ah! So if your reason of framing this article that others black men away from all other black peoples um, the reason of, it seems sort of divisionary. Divisive. Divisive. Okay, let's keep going, guys. Let's keep going. Okay, so what I've done here, what I've done, fam, is I've looked, I've, I've taken the time. Oh, yeah, LGBT, including black women and LGBTQ people. So she's pitting black men against black women and LGBTQ black people. Hold on, man. See, this is the problem. See, this here, here in this lies the problem, guys, for me. First of all, LGBTQ black people are not LGBTQ black people. They are black people who are LGBTQ. <laughs> it's the other way. You're not a gay black person, you're a black gay person. You're not a left-handed black person, you're a black person who's left-handed. Get what I'm saying? Get, you know what I'm saying? You're not, a, you're not a woman that's black, you're a black woman. Why are you putting the LGBTQ before the black? Hey, look, I don't, I'm just going to guess here, Jamila. Then when the slave traders were trading, when they were auctioning the blacks up on the, uh, the auction block, they weren't going, this person is uh, short black. No, this is black short. Black tall. I don't, I don't think they gave a shit what your sexual preference was. They cared about your gender because they wanted to make more slaves at some point. If they wanted to make more slaves or if they wanted to indulge themselves. Or maybe certain jobs they wanted to get a certain genders. But other than that, it was all property and it was all black, Johnson. Why are you, who the hell, who the hell died and made you the arbiter of, of how we should, how we should categorize blackness? See, I think part of the problem with a lot of people that had a critique about this particular closer and, and about black issues in general as it pertains to black people's relation to black people is they tend to put these, these categories which the dominant society, i.e. white America, just does not give a shit about. Only you care about them. Only you care about these groups that you put in front of the blackness. But when it comes to discrimination, when it comes to lack of resources, when it comes to all of the social ills and all the pains that we, all the discrimination that we face, the black goes before the other thing and if you if you if you do it the other way, the way Jamila does it, you're just setting yourself up to divide us. And it obscures the fact that our our issues are not that our issues are are rooted in the black part, the treatment of black. And I think that was the whole that was the whole point of Dave Chappelle's jokes. When Dave Chappelle's talking about LGBTQ. If he was talking about black LGBTQ, he would have said black LGBTQ. When he just says LGBTQ, he's not talking about blacks. Isn't that the problem? People said he was erasing black because he wasn't talking to black LGBTQ. So, so what I'm saying is this article, guys, and I, I hate to spend a whole lot of time in the beginning, but what the hell? Let's do it. It's important, right? Get where I'm, get where I'm coming from. The black part is the part. 
That's the part that leads to the mass incarceration. That's the part to the redlining. You weren't redlining because you were gay. You were redlining because you were black. You being gay was just an extra. Okay? You can't, eat, you can't sit at this table in this restaurant. You can't come in this front entrance. Not because you are gay. Or because you're a woman. It's because you are black. So to switch that around, Jamila, seems very disingenuous. Isn't it? And if we keep switching those things around, doesn't that create a device, a division between us that is artificial that no one else gives a shit about except you? And people that think like you, and people, frankly, that have a career based on this shit, because this is not new for you. Oh, man, the gloves are off, Johnson. The gloves are off. The gloves are off, man. The plane is going down. I look across the plane. I see a black face. I don't know if that black face is gay, straight, trans. I care not. See, it was two of us on the plane. We're going down together. We're going to die in this plane. There's two, two blacks. I didn't care. I didn't. Who's thinking? Well, we're hoping straight. Hope she's not a lesbian. Who would think that way? Anyway, we're going to move on. I'm going to jump to the second paragraph, Johnson. Second paragraph. Let's do this. Where did the belief that queerness or trans identity makes someone any less of a nigga or nigga, for that matter, originate? Yeah, where did it originate? Who's saying it makes you less black to be trans or queer? That black LGBTQ, LGBTQ people don't experience racism and that the phobia is aligned with other parts of their identities. What? I know that's what I'm saying. No, no, no. You're the one who says the you're the one setting the precept that gay people are gay before they're black, not us. You're doing that. Is she gaslighting us? Then she goes on to say, see, my people are sensitive. And rightly so. Did you check with your people before you wrote this article? We've been bruised and battered from every angle. Racism has rubbed us so raw that a symbol of progress of other marginalized groups can easily feel like an affront. Now I'm trying to get into the head of the writer. Because in my head, the writing makes no sense. What's that linear? I'm guessing what she's trying to say is Dave Chappelle is the one who's saying that black trans or black gay people or black queer people aren't black. This is, this is such a bumbled mess. We're talking about a comedy show. And you want to take it as a form of racial study. Black intellectualism. It's, it's, and now you're unpacking this comedy routine. And pulling out of it, because I don't remember him saying that gay black people are not black people. I don't remember that, so I don't know. Or black or gay black people don't experience discrimination. And are treated with like niggas or ERs or A's with an A or with an R. I don't even remember that being in, in, a, in the comedy special. But the damn show is in your article. I'm trying to figure out why. Folks, if you know, put it in the comment section. What is she trying to say here? Is she saying the same thing I'm saying in the beginning? But she's the one framing it as if LGBTQ, LGBTQ goes before black. No one else does that. I don't know. I don't know anyone else who does that. When we talk about, once again, guys, for the record, I'm going to move on. If I'm talking about the gay community, I'm talking about just gay. It's just gay. If we're talking about black gay people, it's black gay people. I won't just say the gay community. I'll say black LGBTQ people. 
because those are different, those are subgroups of that larger group. Like there's men, and then there's white men, and then there's black men, then there's Latino men, and Asian men, and Native American men, right? All right, let's keep moving. This is tiresome, isn't it? It's not just you, it's me as well. Okay. Let's go to the third paragraph. It's one thing to say, challenge immigration policies and make it so that white folks can safely and legally seek asylum here. While people from black nations are deported and worse. But you can't pit the blacks against the alphabet people. Nor can you separate the blacks from women or the bees and Chappelle causes. Many of us are both, or more. And when you try to separate us, sort us, you feed the black ass lie. I'm really trying to, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to get this in. I, why don't I, I don't. Black Americans are not solidly unified around many things. Aside from this desire to be free. And we don't all agree on what freedom looks like. We don't have a single political agenda, no governing document that lines up our shared values. Even within the massive force that we call the black church, there are strikingly different directives about how we do and should live. I agree. I agree. There's no just one thought. The people have different thoughts. Recently, I had to come to accept that some black people think different ways. They're conservative black folks, and not all of them, not all of them are sellouts. They just see things a different, a different vantage point. There are more progressive blacks, and not all of them have their heads in the cloud. Not all of them are snowflakes. Then there are middle-of-the-road blacks, more independent there are blacks who are apolitical, don't care for politics at all. Wouldn't know what bucket you're trying to put them in, wouldn't know what they give a damn. So, I agree. There is no unified school of thought when it comes to politics, worldview. Other than, we agree that we have been oppressed in the United States to certain degrees. But not even that, because some conservatives are a little different on that way of thinking as well. As far as, you know, depending on, depending on you know, their point of view about the way America's treated black folks. And there are some, like if you, you talk to some conservatives, they'll look at this a different way. But I do agree there's differences. There are differences in the way that we interpret America and the way we see ourselves and the way we live our lives, obviously. Not all white people are the same, not all Asians are the same, not all Latinos are the same. No group is all the same. And I shudder to think this, what I'm saying, Johnson, not all, not all LGBTQ people are the same either. I got a feeling that there are different schools of thought within those subgroups. Right, Jamila? All right, let's move on. Let's move on. So uh, let's try, let's jump down to paragraph five and six. However, I will argue, as I have for the last 20 years, and will live to my last breath, uh-oh, that aside from craving liberation, black folks are only single-minded in believing strongly that black men are black are disenfranchised by the proverbial system and that our people have an obligation to care for them. Ah, black conservatives, black feminists, and nearly everyone in between speak seriously of the plight of the black man. They do? They do? What an assumption. We may not all agree on how to address said plight, but we agree that it exists. We do? Conservatives do agree that black men are being disenfranchised? Man, some of the people I argue with who are black conservatives just do not agree with that. They feel that we are disenfranchising ourselves. That's part of the problem, Jamela. But the black man has too often coded language for the cis het men. Okay, heterosexual black men. 
and the degree to which any and all other groups of black people are suffering. That is up for debate. Really? This could just be chalked up to sexism and various other phobias. But I think it's deeper than that. Many of us hold the biggest space for our men. And sometimes our boys were rarely at the expense of the men. And our collective hearts because we feel like they need it more than anyone else. All right, guys. I have to change that, too. Okay. So, she's suggesting that black men think that black men have it worse than any other group. And nobody else has problems. Once again, when I talk about discrimination, and when most of my friends talk about discrimination or uh, white supremacy or systemic racism and what we deal with in this country, I don't remember any of us breaking it down and saying that it's less or more for any particular division of black people. I just think there's a disconnection with this whole article. I don't remember black women uh, being able to go through the door. I, I think I think there was, for various reasons, um, there's certain forms of discrimination that did not impact black, black women as much, but just because they were impacted in other ways, they were even more horrific or even similarly horrific. So I don't want to, I don't think that we, we thought they got a pass. Maybe the government, you know, looked at them differently because they were less of a threat because they physically were seeing, like, like there was no trope, like, there's the brute trope, the, the great brute trope, the evil brute trope of black men trying to attack black white women, for instance. <clears throat> um, that was attributed to black men, and it was used to lynch a lot of black men. They say black men are trying to attack the, the white woman, and we got to kill him. That was something specific for black men. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was America. That is America. And it continues to today. To, to, to erase that reality. Look, believe me, I, I'd rather that be the that not be the case. I I find I, I find no solace, no joy in it. I don't feel like I get a feather in my cap because I come from a, 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 a lineage of of people, of black men who have been uh treated this way, like animals, like we have no control over our libidos, that we are just animals in heat attacking anything white. Like no one feels good about that stereotype. We damn sure don't feel good about the, the life-threatening situations that it can't still to this day put us in. What are you saying? That we enjoy this? Do we find it, what, street cred? Like, we get we get street cred off being the most discriminated against because white men fear black men more than they fear white women? I mean, black women? That white women fear black men more than they fear black women? You deny, you deny this is, exists? You deny that there's a difference in the sexes when it comes to how society treats us? Who's more dangerous? To them? Historically? Jamila, what are you talking about? What is she folks? This is so this is so frustrating. This is making any sense. And then it, it's got this undertone like we like it that we like it like that. Like we this is our device. No, we experience it. We live through it. We don't like it this way. I'd rather, it, I'd rather we all get treated the same. I'd rather we have equality, right? I'd rather we have fair treatment. I don't wallow in this. I would love to avoid it. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Jesus Christ. Seventh paragraph. Black America's version of the big lie. The black ass lie. Black men have it worse than any other group of black people. In her best-selling eloquent rage, a black feminist discovers her superpower. 
Scholar and crunk feminist collective co-founder Brittany Cooper writes, Black men grow up believing that moving through the world politically as though they have it the toughest, as though their pain matters most, as though black women cannot possibly be feeling anything similar to the dehumanization and disrespect they have felt. There is little to no consideration of what those of, the, of us who are harmed by misogyny and maybe hurt even worse might endure that it might in many cases be worse for us, laments Cooper. Seems to many men a preposterous supposition. Wow. Now we're doing a who's oppressed most Olympics. Who gets to feel the most pain, black women or black men? Is there a trophy being handed out for this? <clears throat> Some type of a medal? A merit badge? How about money? Money would be great. Is there a, a difference of money payment? Is there a financial incentive to be the most discriminated against? I don't think there is. So I don't think there's really a fight or an argument for it. But folks, it's pretty obvious if there wasn't a reward from our system, a reward from our society, we'd go to black women. I believe black women obtain better positions, higher positions more frequently than black men. Hey, man, I've worked in D.C. for a long time. I've, it's, there's a lot more black women employed in the federal government. I know that for a fact. There may be, there may be potentially... Black men who have higher positions individually, maybe, possibly. But the lack of representation of black men opposed to black women, I think, I think there's a difference. I think we could quantifiably count how many black women have GS 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 positions all the way up to the uh, senior staff positions as opposed to black men. And I think the number of black women employed in the government making these salaries would far outnumber the number of black men. In fact, I'm, I'm positive of that. Having worked as a contractor in Washington, D.C. for these federal agencies, for a couple of federal agencies. So I don't know what you're talking about there, but we, we can't make that. I can make that claim. But as Ms. Cooper, you got any numbers or data to go along with the assertions that Ms. Cooper's making that somehow black women may be experiencing more forms of racism or more forms of disenfranchisement than black men? There's a couple things we can look at. Because I guess we are sort of doing this comparison, like, who's got it worse in America, black men or black women? Remember, guys, this is an article that was wrote and put out on Vanity Fair that, based on everything that I've read so far in my summation, it pits black women and black men against each other. It says that we, black men, don't see black women as suffering, as being hampered by their blackness, and she also throws in LGBTQ people as well. It's like black men against everybody else black. And then she says, no, that's what we're doing, even though that's the basis of her article. Well, Miss Lemieux, there's a couple criteria in which I judge life. Me as a dad, now as a granddad, uh, tend to look at a couple of columns. One of them is life expectancy. See, it doesn't really matter. Uh, a, lot of these, a lot of these things are superficial, right? Can't take it with you. Shit like that. Degrees. We could talk degrees. We could talk money. Okay, we could do those things. I think at the end of the day, when it comes to degrees and education and money, we're probably going to come up on the side of black women being more successful. We could probably count that. But let's move past the money part. Let's not be so superficial. How about life expectancy? Yeah, well, life expectancy would be a good barometer to determine who has a harder life. I would think the dead people have the hardest life, right? The people that die earliest probably had a harder life, right? Can we, can we, can we agree on that? So if you are no longer here, 
And we know that stress also causes, contributes to death, right? Uh, stress contributes, is a contributor to a shorter lifespan. The average black man lives about 68 years. The average black woman, 75 years. That's a whole seven years of you enjoying life without us. Because, you know, you had it so much harder than us. That's a joke of being sarcastic. Because you would think the person who had it harder lives less. Remember, guys, I'm not the one being an asshole here. I'm responding to her. Jamila Lemieux is the asshole here. I'm the one responding to her comments. Another way in which we would, that I would prefer or I would think a good barometer for who has a better life or who, who has it harder, besides lifespan, would be freedom. Freedom is yet another way to be determined the quality of life, right? And one way that we lose our freedom is having it literally taken away by our penal system. And mass incarceration is another way in which we determine that. So when you consider not, Brett, not Mrs. Cooper's thoughts, which I'm sure are very, very advanced thought, very wise, but you know, excusing ourselves from limiting our, our thought process to the thoughts of Miss Cooper, your friend, how about we look at the data for who's incarcerated? Yeah, because freedom outside in the world with the ability to watch Netflix can go to the store and pick up a stop by Arbon Bain, Arbon Pain, or I don't know, Cracker Barrel and pick up a salad. That may determine who has a better life. So here, according to according to my data, my research. Black men ages 20 to 34 have a 1 in 9 incarceration level. Meanwhile, black women have a 1 in 100 incarceration level. That would mean you are one-tenth the incarceration level that we have. Which would also mean that's a pretty good deal. Like, that's that's good. Like, Look, I'm not saying I want black women to go to jail. I want all of us to go to jail less. Because I think the rate for white women is like 1 in 200, okay? So I don't want black women to go to jail more to catch up with us. But I'm not the one making the argument that somehow black women have much harder lives than black men and we look down on black women and we don't respect the amount of pain that black women deal with. But also, guys, isn't it true that when we look at the numbers, we could actually look at numbers instead of just talking? And if you're going to make an article where you write about how black men don't respect black women's plight or LGBTQ plight, and then let's do the numbers on LGBTQ. What are the numbers of incarceration for LGBTQ people? And not just LGBTQ people, black LGBTQ people. Or as you put it, LGBTQ people who are black. These are all questions, man. Put them in the comment section, guys. Send me a super chat so I can read your comment. I got another paragraph or two. Let's go. Let's keep going. Paragraph eight and nine. Black people are not wrong to want to love our men and love them hard. Black men and boys are uniquely disenfranchised in the account of their identities, but they're not alone in having such an experience. Who says black men are, are alone in being black? Furthermore, their oppression does not absolve the men themselves of the power of patriarchy. Okay, I agree. I agree. We're not absolved for being men. And it who, who act who uh, who may be misogy misogynist or who may uh, treat women who may be sexist. I agree with that. It does not prevent them from exerting that power over women and LGBTQ people, particularly black ones. Hey, man. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hold on a second. 
Is she putting gay people over? Is she putting LGBTQ, LGBTQ people above what, black men? Like, yo, yo, hold on a second. It really seems like she's saying gay white people have harder lives than black men. I know that's not what she's saying. It sure sounds like it. Because I, I thought she was talking about LGBTQ black people. But she may be talking about LGBTQ people in general. Like, LGBT Asian, white, Native American, Latino. Like, is that what she's doing? Folks, is there anyone out there who really believes that I don't know that Caitlyn Jenner has a harder life than Tim Black? Does anyone out there believe that? Is that what you think? You think you think my opportunities are more vast and I have more freedom and more access to resources and a clearer path through life than a trans white man? Or a gay white man? Or a lesbian? Asian woman? Asian Filipino woman? Is that really what you're saying? Because no one's going to know anything about your sexuality unless you tell them. How could they know? To, say they hate. I, see, here's my thing, guys. And this is why I always have a problem with this conversation. Look, unless you, how would you possibly, if you, even if you hated, if you were so draconian and just plain stupid, that you had a personal gripe, right? You said, ah, I'm not going to serve any lesbians. How the hell would you know? <laughs> like, how would you know? You were sitting around looking at look at her hair. I bet she's a lesbian. Excuse me. How's your husband? I'm not married. Okay, now you're deducing. Does that mean she's just not? Maybe she's divorced, or she doesn't like men. Or she has a wife, which does it mean? Like, you would have to be very, like, very nosy. You have to pry pretty far in someone's life to find out the things that you want to hate them for if they exist or not, if they're actually present in the person that you want to hate. But a black person, a black man walks in, you're like, shit, my purse. As soon as you see him, you don't need to figure anything out. You don't need to ask questions. You don't have to rely on the hairstyle or choice of uh, if they're wearing mauve or pink. Doesn't matter what's their favorite band, right? What's on their Spotify playlist? No, doesn't matter if they like show tunes. You saw a black face, you saw skin. This walk into the room, and that was all you needed to know. So, I'm just saying, guys. It just looks like looking at this paragraph, I may have I may have given it way too much credit. Let me repeat. She says, furthermore. Their oppression, meaning black men's oppression, does not absolve the men themselves. Now we're just men, we're not black men, we're men. Now she's putting black men in the same category as being all powerful as white men. Well, we know that's not the fucking case. That doesn't exist. But she says, furthermore, the men of themselves of the power of patriarchy. Because now we're men. We're not just black men, we're men. And it does not prevent them from exerting their power over women. Now we have power over white women? Dog. Over women and LGBTQ plus people, particularly black ones. Yo. Yo. Let's get something right. There are black men who are very successful in America, who have some form of power, some level of power, but that's due to a white society has given them that and granted that to them because they make even more from them. Case in point, we look at LeBron James, we say LeBron James is a powerful black man. 
He has uh, him and Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, LeBron James, powerful black men. They employ black people. They give black people, they employ other people as well, I'm sure. Okay? Uh, very successful. But particularly LeBron James is in that position of power who has that, has this amount of riches only because he provides white men with even more riches. If it weren't for LeBron and James, LeBron James being more of a boon, a financial boon for some white guy, he would not be LeBron James. He just be some tall black dude working at the docks. Or worse, he be some tall black dude in cell block six, number five five two three seven. Okay, because if he's six foot five, two hundred eighty pounds or whatever he is, he would have at some point scared the hell out of a black out of a white person or a white woman or one of these LGBTQ plus white people, and they would have called the nine one one, and then would have came five zero, who would have put. LeBron James in jail for 20 years. So we're not, I, I just feel that she's being very disingenuous with her arguments. It's very flimsy what she's saying here. That makes much, doesn't make much sense. Doesn't seem very on point. Seems like she's all over the place. Now she's just throwing black men. She's, she's saying black men are misogynist towards white women. We know that shit ain't true. We know that black men do not have power over white women. What planet are you living on, Jamila? And even if you think in your mind somehow that somewhere in the recesses of your mind you believe that black men have dominance over gay men or gay women, gay, gay, remember LGBTQ people are men as well. So you're saying that black men have asked, look, you're saying that black men have power and prestige and status over gay white men? Are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking crazy? Isaiah Washington, get in here and have a seat, sir. Let's talk. <laughs> now, cut the shit. She's all over the map in this. Look, I was with you when you were saying it was black black men need to look at how they treat black women. Then I was I pushed back about black men and it was in black gay folks. And I like how you were framing that. But now I see your job is to pit black people and say black people the most disenfranchised people in the history of America are somehow dominating and being misogynist and overbearing and all this shit to every group of people except white men. But white men are gay and trans too. So who are you talking about? It's just any, it's certain anybody except black men and somehow we have damaged them. Us. The same ones who had their privates cut off and shoved in their mouths though they were hung from trees. We're the ones disenfranchising Other people. All right. Black women lives are largely colored by their lopsided loyalties. From girlhood, we see black men as our greatest hope. We do? Well, that would be up to black women to tell me. I don't know that. We're seen as both fierce, as both fierce kings for us to serve and vulnerable princesses for us to protect. Princes for us to protect. As the old saying goes, many of us love our sons and raise our daughters, and we often raise them to think twice before dropping a dime on one, even if he's harmed us greatly. We're encouraged to accept the bare minimum in our romances and express gratitude to be able to love a brother at all. And somehow this is supposed to be in the service of a greater black good. Okay. I'm sorry, this is getting crazy, Johnson. Now, this is the part where it gets a little murky for me because I'm a black man. And unlike Miss Jamila, I'm not going to suggest that I, 
that I know all the goings on inside the minds of black women is how they were raised from their black parents. I really don't know. What I can tell you is that I come from a black family. Surprise. I can tell you that my sister got preferential treatment from my father and my mother. You know, her entire life, she was the girl. So she got the house co-signed, like the mortgage. She co-signed to help her buy a mortgage. Her and her husband. My parents put them, you know, co-sign for their house. My brother and I had to fend for ourselves. When she needed somewhere to go, she needed somewhere to stay, and she had the kids, she could stay with them, with my mom and my dad. I was out of the house at 16. My brother, a little later, but still on his own. But we knew why. It's because she was the girl. So you're telling me that I'm my story is unique. That that's not usually how it goes. Usually, the the son gets the co-sign on the house, while his sister doesn't. Are you? Is that what you're saying? That my experience is somehow an aberration? It's a anomaly. It's not normal for black people, black people to 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 protect black women. I was raised the opposite of what you're describing. And I know I'm an old-ass guy, you know. I'm a little older than you, Jamila, but I'm not that much older than you. Okay, so, you know, I'm Generation X. I'm the age of all, most of your favorite rappers, I imagine. Well, if you liked rap. Didn't think it was full of misogynists who hate black women. So anyway, my point is I, I don't think I agree totally. I don't agree with your framing based on my personal experience, but I do realize it can be anecdotal. People would have to put in the comment section. Other people would have to chime in about their personal experiences. But once again, you are stating your experience. I guess this is your experience. You don't even say, you don't even own it like, hey, in my experience, this is what I've seen. You're saying this is how black America is. One minute you say there's no unified thought amongst black people. There's no universal thought. There's no universal goal. There's no agreed upon set of rules for black people when it comes to politics. But now you're saying there's agreed upon set of set rules about the the, the dominance, the, the, the pristine treatment of black men. And that black men are somehow treated more they're somehow more prized than black women. Not in America. Like, I just read you the statistics on death and freedom. Maybe if Master thought he needed a strong buck to bail the cotton, pick up bales, he would say the black man is more valuable. But if he wants somebody for other reasons... He might not pick the black man. But sometimes maybe he did. Okay, we were exposing Jamila's article for what it is. And going, taking the time to painstakingly go through various paragraphs in order to come away with some realistic way to frame this or reframe this. Because I got problems with the article. I think the article's off base. Let's go back to the article, guys. So here in this, now this is, so far, this is the most problematic, most problematic uh, portion of problematic paragraphs that I've encountered so far. Okay. And uh, she was saying that, I guess that black women uh, take a back seat for, uh, our daughters, our black daughters are raised to take a back seat for black men. And and I and I argue that that's may, that may or may not be the case. It has not been my reality. I wish that she would take ownership of it. Look, look, guys. If <laughs> damn it, if what Jamila is saying here is that it's been her experience that if, if she said it's in her experience that black women have had to take a backseat to black men, she should say that. 
say, this is my experience, this is what I've experienced, then I can't deny that that's your reality. If you say that's your reality, your reality, I will believe it. But it's not my reality. But when she makes blanket statements as if this is everyone else's experience, when I know it not to be true, because I can name at least one family that includes a black woman in it, <laughs> my sister, my little sister, um, I don't come away with the same notion that black women are somehow more um, just there to take care of black men. I, I never felt that way about my sister. I don't feel that way about my wife, and that's not the way that I was raised. In fact, my mom, for, for I mean, she, she was an entrepreneur, but she basically was a stay-at-home mom. But that was a time when, a, when one person could work like my dad did and basically take care of a household, right? She did, she did other things that added money to the equation, but for the most part, he was the one who kept a full-time job his entire life up until like six months before he passed away. Okay, let's move on to the next paragraph. So we're up to, uh, I guess this is like 10th and 11th or something. It says, but I think with black men, it's not a reciprocal arrangement. And some of them will not, will be quick to tell you that they never ask for this. The average black man was not raised to see himself as obligated to the woman of our race. Certainly not to queer people or the, the other bees. <laughs> his obligation is to himself to get as free as he can be. Over time, we end up committed to supporting him and his freedom, not ours. This is the problem, guys. She says, average black men are not raised to see themselves obligated to black women. <clears throat> um, not raised to see themselves as obligated to black women. Uh, I was sort of like a, it was sort of like a given in my household, but if we're talking generally speaking, black men still generally marry black women, just like most other races generally marry people in the same you know same group. Now we do know that black men do marry outside of that from time to time, or there's a number I think it's like a quarter of black men or so marry different people. That quarter of black men are marrying other people who are also marrying outside of their particular race as well. So they're also inter, intermarrying, right? So they're not marrying phantoms. They're marrying other people who are making the same decision, correct? Okay. Um, I wouldn't say we're not raised to, to think that black women are important or that black women are, I, I, I disagree. I don't, think that, I don't think black men are raised that way. I think they get out in the world and they expose themselves to different things and they may or may not at that time make different choices about who they ultimately end up with. But I don't know if they were raised to do that, right? Being raised that way to like, you need to only worry about yourself and only worry about, don't worry about nobody else. But you're saying black women are not raised to only worry about themselves? And if that's the case, if that's the point you're trying to make, that's a different story, right? But that's not black men's fault if you're saying black women are raised not to worry about themselves. That makes sense. If you've been raised not to worry about yourself, that's a per that's a that's a parenting, that's a that's a parenting issue, right? That's not a black male issue. We're not raising you. You said raised, right? Right? So if we're saying that there's something wrong with the way people are raised, who holds, who holds that responsibility? And who are the primary caregivers of those black kids that you're talking about? These black boys who have been raised this way, who's raising them? Ah, oh, Jamila, Jamila. See, this is not my goal. Once again, this is not my goal. It is not my goal to attack black women. It's not my goal to pit us against one another, okay? 
But if Jamal is going to start the narrative that black boys are raised a certain way and, and then put it on black boys, that black boys have this mindset, who we get it from? Who is raising these black boys? Jamila. So your real beef is with black women. Or your beef could be with the white society that has impacted black women to such an extent that they feel that the best opportunity for their black son is to do what? Make an alternative choice. But that would be based on white society. Wouldn't that also be a, 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 a piece of the, of the pie? Like, wouldn't that white society, the dominant society, have a, have a part in that? That doesn't appear anywhere in your article. Right? Because I got to imagine, if the, if the black mom is looking out for the black son who she loves dearly, you say loves more than she loves her daughter for some reason. Okay? Um, but... His racist black boy to not want black wife and that old black woman, nothing, even though, is there a breakdown between the love and the relationship between the son and the mom? So we start getting to earlier that I'm really not qualified. <laughs> I, I'm not qualified to really go into the black woman or black parenting dynamic uh, of moms and sons. Maybe we should have on a professional that discuss these things. Um, and maybe that's probably who should have wrote the article that you wrote. It would have been a little bit more helpful than a feminist who appears to have an axe to grind with black men. But that's just my that's just my takeaway from the article so far. Let's keep going, guys. She has more to say, and uh, I'm here for it. So let's go. As a result of the black ass lie. Identifying as a black feminist is akin to identifying as a hater of black men in the eyes of many. No, you don't say. Why would we say that? Why would we think you hate black men? Oh, we're all wrong to think that. Yeah, like we're let me like we're the ones making a mistake. Disloyalty to black men is one of the greatest crimes a black woman can commit. Uh nah. No, it's not. Like, one of the greatest crimes a black person could commit is loyalty to black women. That's just my opinion. Like, when you, and when you say loyalty, what do you mean by loyalty? Like, you're, no, you're under no obligation to marry a black guy. And a black man's under no obligation to marry a black woman. Just because I chose to, that's what I chose to do. I could, I could see life no other way for me. That was my preference. That's what I chose. It was natural to me, like putting in my putting on my pants one leg at a time. Just seemed like the thing to do. It's who I fell in love with, who I who I dated. But she says something very interesting here, guys. She says, people see me as a hater. It's because I'm a black feminist. They think I hate men. Why would anybody think that? And why do so many people think that you black feminists? De detest black men. And why is it, if it is a group of people that believe this, and people si tend to have this thought about you, you don't think it has anything to do with you? Or is this all of us coming to the wrong conclusion about you? Get what I'm saying? Just something to think about. It doesn't matter what a black male comedian, rapper, politician, or scholar says about black women. It doesn't. His stuff for his people is uniquely unlikely to be challenged. It's okay. But to be a black woman who is for the women? For the women. Ah! To be a black woman who is for the women. Hold on a second, Johnson. Hold on a second, Johnson. There we go. There it is. See, here's the problem. Maybe here's the problem. I think we've got to it, Jamila. You are for the women. You're not necessarily for black women. You talk all this smack. You offer, all of, you offer up all this gaslighting, all these straw men attacks, these false narratives, these fake narratives. And at the end of the day, you're not even for black women. You're for the women. So if I disagree with something a rapper says... But 
I still glam that they are supportive of the black community. Maybe that is a reason why people might overlook them. Because they have shown a commitment to the black community. You, on the other hand, have a commitment to the women. Which is a lot of multiple communities. And some of them that play probably pay pretty well. Is that making sense? I'm not saying you're doing all this because you're a set out, but it sure sounds a little suspect. Because you're talking about the women when you know that's a lot of people. When we're talking about black men and black women, these are very distinct groups, right? When we talk about black LGBTQ, that's a very distinct group. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, <clears throat> but to be a black woman who is for the women, expect to have your politics weaponized against you, to be told that you are what holds us back. You are what divides us as a people. You're not even with us, you're with the women. You are not with black people, you're with the women. And with the women is not the same as being with black people. Own that if that's how you feel. Black women have not been <clears throat> particularly outspoken about Chappelle's treatment of us in his work. Before during the wade into the mess, this mess of a media cycle, I have been too badly burned by reactions to my criticism of actual sex offenders like, oh God, here goes Bill Cosby, and oh God, here goes R. Kelly. Oh God. Oh, man. God damn it, R. Kelly is like the black feminist version of OJ. Yeah, black feminists bring up R. Kelly like white people bring up OJ. Hey, OJ got away with it. OJ got away with it. Only difference is R. Kelly's in jail. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't know if you noticed or not, but a lot of black women kept buying R. Kelly records too. It wasn't just black guys. Okay? So your your point is only half can you could could I think I believe R. Kelly was more appealing to black women than to black men. I mean, I don't think it was a lot of black guys going, ooh, R. Kelly. I mean, there were, but those are probably LGBTQ black men, right? But what I'm saying is I think he was more of a sex symbol to black women. And black women had more of an affinity to R. Kelly than black men. I know you're not suggesting that black men bought more R. Kelly albums than black women. Just admit, Jamela, that you'll build beef once again, and even with black men. It's with black women. That's who your beef is with. You need to come out the closet. You don't hate black men. You hate black women. That's what you really have a problem with if it's not the way that black women have raised their black daughters or the way that their preferential treatment they've given to their black boys and did raise their black boys and say those black boys don't owe something to black women and they need to go their own way. All the way to the point where you believe that black women buying so many R. Kelly albums and didn't want to let black R. Kelly go. You cannot base your, your, you know, your deception. I mean, your your uh, analysis of black folks, and base it on the actions or reactions to a, some faceless trolls on Twitter. I mean, there's more to life than that, and it seems like a lot of this must be coming down to that. But I think I think my for my my former conclusion is best. I think you believe that. Uh, I think you I think black women really piss you off, which is why you're with the women, the women. Not the black women, the women. Because the black women you have a problem with. Let's keep going, guys. We're almost over. <sighs> While the advent of social media has given us outspoken black bees more of a platform than we could have ever hoped for in the past, it's also made it easier than ever to harass and demean us. Well, shit. Yo. Yo. 
You know, everyone's able to be more demeaned now. Everyone gets more harassment. Everyone gets more uh, more attacked, more trolled. Because we now have a physical place, like a, a place to actually be where trolls can go. And they can interact with your likeness on a website. This is a new phenomenon. Social media has its ups and downs. But I'm glad they take his ups as opposed to what's downs when it comes to the ability to build a platform, to develop a following, for you to get your message out, to pass, to bypass gatekeepers. Though it appears you have little problem bypassing the gatekeepers, it appears that the gatekeepers open up the gate when you come through, Jamila. Yeah, when you come through. When you come through, it looks like you have no problem going through the gate. With your bylines at Vanity Fair and BET and all the other places you were published. Looks like you're doing just fine, sister. What are you talking about? Oh, some people said mean things about you on Instagram. That's only because you're getting exposure. You got haters because you're getting that much exposure. You're getting that much of a distribution that people are seeing it. And the negative exposure, which I'm sure you're aware your negative exposure is maybe even more valuable than your positive exposure because people talk about things they hate. More than they talk about things they like, the louder, the loudest is always the people that complain, which is also a signal boost for your platform. So, sorry, but not sorry that you have to deal with this shit. We all do. Don't let it get to you. Take walks. And like I said, grab your coffee, your wine, your tea, whatever you need. You know? And, and let's have at it. Miss Lemieux, I have a problem with your article, but I've already voiced that. I wonder why you wrote this. Uh, I guess you wrote it because you had something to say. Once again, I think your, your, your anger is misdirected. I think many people have misinterpreted this article and framed it incorrectly. I think you are not going out to black men. I think that your true adversary, your true nemesis is the black woman. I think you're very clear who you're most upset with, who you blame these black men's actions or lack of actions on black women, their parents, their mothers who raised them. I think that's, I think that's pretty clear. Says, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what my takeaway is. And uh, I just wish you were in a better place. I have a, I have a problem with you putting LGBTQ people Separate from their blackness, I think their blackness is a part of who they are. Um, <clears throat> I have a problem with you depicting black men as being somehow <clears throat> preferred by this society, the one I live in, over LGBTQ people. That's crazy. Like, look, now some people watch my show may know this story. But back when I worked as a contractor, uh, I used to tell the story of this, this gentleman I knew by the name of Joe. His name was Joe. And Joe was a good friend of mine. I know him for at least five years. He had his own contracting company, uh, subcontractor at this federal agency. And he was a sharp-dressed brother, very light-skinned. I always thought he was Italian. He wore these nice suits, $1,000 suits, okay? And uh, I was in IT, and I did a lot of administrative work on the IT side. After working with Joe for five years and being a firm with Joe, going to lunch with Joe, meeting Joe's family, uh, developing of a personal relationship with Joe, I never knew that Joe's real name was Jose. I didn't know Joe's name was Jose until the last, uh, a month or two before I left the company because I had to reset Joe's account. He forgot his password or he had changed his password. He got locked out. He had to be unlocked. And that's when I went into the, the uh, properties of his account and I was able to see his full name. Not the name he was been telling me, but the name his mama gave him. That's when I realized Joe was short for Jose, not Joseph. <laughs> so my point is this. Look, I'm not knocking Joe for using the word Jose, for using the name Jose. Because Joe lives, Joe lives and works and has a business in a framework and an environment where it may be advantageous to fit in with white people. He's not trying to fit in with black people. He's trying to fit in with white people. 
It's white people he has to navigate. It's white people who have the, the, the sign-off ability on his contracts, not black people. So it's the dominant society. It's the white power structure who he must appease. And he wanted to have every advantage. He wanted to eliminate disadvantages, even potential disadvantages. Is he positively sure that white people would, would uh, have a problem or could discriminate against him if they knew he was Latino or Mexican? or whatever he is, right, right? Or is that an assumption? Of course it's an assumption. But he wanted to mitigate those risks. He wanted to put his best foot forward. In America, your best foot is a white foot. It's not a Latino foot. It ain't a black foot. So, yes, and I'm not knocking him for that. But he gets that opportunity. He has the opportunity. He has the ability to do so because he is of a what? Of a complexion that offers him protection from the collection. Shout out to Paul Moon. So that's one point. But my broader point is this. Gay people do the same thing. Gay people have the ability. LGBTQ people have the ability. Maybe safe for trans. Have the ability to do the same thing. That's right. These LGBTQ people that you say, I have some dominance over that I may treat badly. In what way, I don't know. I don't control their financial outcomes. I don't control where they live, who they date, where they go, if they could get a home, if they could get a contract. Black people are disenfranchised to the point where my personal feelings about LGBTQ, LGBTQ people matters not. Sure, I can make a joke in a comedy routine on a Netflix special that Netflix, owned by a white guy, could decide to air for me, okay? Or not, okay? But that's about as far as go it goes. And and then even if the even if the LGBTQ person felt that I am disenfranchising them in some way, discriminated against them, whoop, they could just cut me off. And guess what? All the discrimination is gone, Johnson. All my power is eliminated with the click of the power button or a change of the channel. But the thing about being LGBTQ is even if I were in that position where I could control them, that I do have this sway in my bigoted, draconian thoughts, right, could disenfranchise them or somehow adversely impact them. All they got to do is do like Joe or Jose and keep their identity to their goddamn selves, Johnson. So that, my friends, that, my friends. <clears throat> so that, my friends, nullifies and eviscerates your argument that us black guys somehow some, has some type of agency over LGBTQ people. Okay, so stop putting this in a bucket and stop, uh, stop uh, exasperating or expanding into into unlikely or crazy fantastical measure, measurements of how powerful black men are in America. We're not powerful in America. If we were powerful in America, the first thing we'd do is live longer. If we were powerful in America, the first thing we would do is have more power to what? To be free in America, which would be not to live behind bars in America. To have better outcomes, both medically and, and with our prison industrial system and our court systems, okay? So until those times happen, until that time arrives, until that time arrives, Jamila, I would have to say that your article is full of shit, okay? Yeah. Until the time arrives that black men are so powerful that we're no longer the most incarcerated and had the shortest lifespans of any other group in America, you don't get the room. No, you don't have the room to talk shit about us and say how we're depriving someone else of something. To deprive the world of something, to deprive other groups of access to happiness, to life, to peace would, would necessitate that we ourselves have it. The first thing the rich person does is take care of themselves. So if black people are so rich, if black men, if black men, Ongo Bongo, black men are so powerful, the first power we would do is we would grant it to ourselves, a better life for ourselves. And the fact that we're unable to do that just, just dis disintegrates your whole idea, your whole article. Horrible article, I'm surprised Vanity Fair printed it. Congratulations. All right. Uh, and I think if there's a big black ass lie, it's that you 
Uh, support black women because you don't. The black ass lies that you that you uh, support black women. So. 